power does not travel in words. But power is the result of relationship. The power comes after the result of the relationship you experience with the Holy Spirit. And there's a seek of power intimacy. Jesus had that incredible experience with his Father that gave him the ability to be able to fulfill the will of his Father. We've come so far, but now there remains incredible spiritual strongholds that can only be penetrated by the supernatural. We have got to rise up to a higher level of strategic spiritual warfare that will demolish the last stronghold of Satan in this last hour, we are going to have to have a supernatural manifestation. The power will only come after we have an experience with the Holy Ghost. God didn't ask you to do it in your own strength. He said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. What I'm going to put in your mouth, you're going to root out. You're going to tear down. You're going to pull down. Don't you dare try until you get my word in your mouth. They filled Jesus with his humanity, with the Holy Ghost. And that's why you and I have got to have the same Holy Ghost if we're going to do the same work. There's a family waiting for you to witness. There's a church there that's dead, that's waiting for somebody with resurrection life and resurrection power, with the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. God didn't ask you to do it in your own strength. He said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. Well, I will bless the Lord and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Somebody give God praise wherever you are today. Mark, I am excited. Today is day three. Brother Cirillo is taking us on a journey, answering the question that the disciples asked Jesus. I believe that you and I are asking this question. I believe every person that's watching today is asking Jesus this question, what must we do? Oh yeah, and there is the spirit of faith. When we are emerged in the word of God, I as we it. are doing every day, you know, the good news is that the disciple asked Jesus, what must we do to do the works of God? And the good news is that they found the answers. Amen. You're going to find the answer also. Amen. And I just want to tell you today, we're greeting you from a brand new set here at the Mara Cirillo Legacy International Center. You know what? God is upgrading the thing that is surrounding your life today. God is upgrading the anointing of his powerful presence upon your life today. And I want to congratulate you, Mark. I can't wait. We are not just going through McDonald's and having some fast food, but my oh. God, we are sitting down in the best restaurant in France. We are having five star meat. I mean, prime. This is Brother Cirillo unplugged. This is what built this legacy center. People look at this incredible campus and they look at the incredible ministry of Mara Cirillo over seven decades and they see all of the masses and all of the blessing of God. But all of that 
was built on the foundation of proof producers. Amen. We serve a God of excellence. Amen. And we deserve excellences because Jesus paid the price for it. Amen. And you know, I want to just say this to you. What you're doing is making an incredible investment in your future. You know, I say something and it's so true. It really is from this proof producer message. Brother Cirillo teaches us that we're either feeding our fears or we're feeding our future. And what you're doing by connecting every day on Facebook is you are feeding your future. You are a full-time minister. Amen. You may be a teacher, you may be a student, you may think that your best days are behind you, but I declare to you that your best is yet to come. Stay connected just before we reconnect. And I tell you, we have been so blessed. I mean, literally, like fire is coming out of my computer as I'm joining with everybody watching these incredible Facebook live programs. And the things that Brother Srello said yesterday, you're going to see a few of them on your screen. These will be on your end of course certificate of completion quiz. And Mark, I can't think of a certificate of completion that is greater than a proof producer's certificate of completion. That is telling the devil, I am serious about being a proof producer. Amen. And I can't wait for the teaching of today. I'm so excited. The true purpose of miracle revealed. Yes. And so just before we go in, here are just a few things that Brother Srillo released to us yesterday. You're seeing it on the screen. He released the truth that the church is God's healing center. And I love what Brother Srillo was imparting to us. He was trying to remind us, we were saying this the other day, God isn't looking for superstars. God is looking for one or two people that will allow Jesus to make something out of their life. The Bible says God chooses the foolish things. He chooses the weak things. And I want you to say today, I am strong. I want you to say today that God is not depending on anything I possess. God is depending on what he can make of us. And then Mark, I love this. Brother Srilo calls it the big question. This is really, I believe, outside of our salvation. Here's what the Apostle Paul said. I love this. When he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus, there were two questions that consumed his life. Number one is he said, who are you? And that's the most important thing for us to really discover who he is. But then he said, and what will you have me to do? Brother Srilo is revealing the big question. The disciples asked Jesus, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Amen. And you, you know, Greg, even before I met Dr. Serlo mm. years ago, that was the question that consumed my heart in the beginning of my walk with Jesus. Amen. You know, every person has a vacuum inside of their life and people try to fill it with so many things that they feel like are going to fulfill purpose in their life and they find emptiness. You know, I am finding in the later years of my life, just the joy of serving Jesus, just the joy of spending a little more time in his presence. And just the joy just of his the, word. It's just the beginning. Hallelujah. I know, Mark, you said something yesterday and then we're gonna go to the message and we put it in the comments. But I love what you said. You said that God is wanting to show his glory to the world through you. The Bible says that he searches to and fro throughout the earth, finding somebody that will take their hands like Brother Cirillo led us yesterday and put them in the presence of God and look in those hands and say the future of the work of the kingdom of God is in the hands of the person that will find the answer to the question, what must we do that we might work the works of God? If you're ready today to find that answer, I want you to join Mark and I and our team here in welcoming God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. Once again, we greet you in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, 
the son of the living God. John 6, 28. Jesus' disciples and his followers asked him what I believe is one of the most important questions, if not one of the biggest questions ever asked our master, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? In this sixth chapter, Jesus performed one of the greatest miracles of his ministry. And you and I are talking about the events that surrounded that miracle and the asking of this question which is the theme of our lessons here, a great multitude followed Jesus because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. Now, let's continue from there this morning and get into the miracle story. When Jesus went up into a mountain, there he sat with his disciples. The Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. And when Jesus lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him. And he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? When we talk about this great multitude that followed Jesus, we discovered as they ran after him because they saw the miracles which he did on them that were diseased. We discovered that not a man, not a ministry, or not even the working of a gift is the healing center of Jesus Christ. We discovered that the church where two or three are gathered together in my name, that is the healing center of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus asked Philip A question that proposes other questions to you and I when we understand the character and the nature of our blessed Lord. For example, he lifts up his eyes. He sees the great company that followed him to the hillside. And he says to Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? Now the first question that comes to Brother Cyril's mind is this. Did Jesus have the gifts, the manifestation 
of the Spirit? Was he not able or did he not know what was going to happen in that experience with the little boy who was somewhere in the crowd with five loaves and with two fishes? I think we would all have to say without going into the fact of whether Jesus was omniscient or whether he was omnipotent or whether he could be omnipresent. Without going into any of those details, we have to conclude that even if Christ left his heavenly characteristics to come into this earth as a man, he still had the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which he was anointed with, manifested in his life. Why did he ask this question? If he knew the little boy was there, if he knew he was going to work this miracle, Jesus lifted up his eyes. He saw the great company. He said to Philip, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? The next verse of scripture gives us a partial understanding and we don't get the full answer until we get to the end of the miracle. But the sixth verse says, this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. So by whatever gift or manifestation of the Spirit, we want to call it discernment or knowledge, Jesus knew he was going to perform a miracle. He knew that he didn't have to go to the grocery store. Every movement of Jesus was for a divine purpose. There was no wasted action. There were no wasted words and there were no wasted movements in the ministry and the life of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ. Every movement was for a divine purpose. The God that you and I serve is a God of purpose. He is a God of plan. He doesn't just shoot from the hips and hope that something happens. He is a God of complete design. And he's a God of divine objectivity. You know, that's a great reason why you and I can have confidence as we walk with the master, as we serve the master, and as we follow the master. Why? Because we got him by the arm and we're just hanging on. We know that he knows that he knows that he knows where he's going and what he's doing and the reason why he's doing it. Amen. He was not only out to prove Philip. What could he prove about Philip? All Philip could do was Say there's a little boy here that's got some bread and some fishes. And what could Philip do? Philip could just say, 
They're not enough to feed this multitude. But Jesus wasn't out to prove Philip. He was out to prove him, himself. Now, someone said to me, Brother Sro, Jesus never did miracles to prove himself. We get up in the pulpit today and we need to make every kind of an excuse simply because the manifestation of the supernatural and all that God stands for is in very little evidence. One day, Philip came to Jesus, and what did he say to him? He said, show us the Father. And what did our Lord say? He said, have I been such a long time with you, and have you not seen the Father? I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, and he that hath seen me hath what? Hath seen the Father. When he answered Philip like this, you could tell that there was still a bewilderment. And so Jesus went one step further and he said, all right, Philip, if you don't believe me for what I say, he said, how about believing me for the works that I do? John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of our blessed Lord, who said, there's one coming after me who is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall do what baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. I'm putting you down under water. But wait, the one that's coming after me, he doesn't deal in water, he deals in fire. Oh, glory to God. They took John and they imprisoned him. And he knew what his sentence was. He was going to be beheaded. He would die for his faithfulness. For being a prophet of God. And John called one of his messengers. And he said, I don't mind dying. I'll die for the calling that God raised me up for. But I want to know one thing. I want to know if this man that I baptized in the River Jordan and the glory of God came upon him and the voice spoke. I want to know, said John, if he is the Christ before I die, please tell me, is he the Christ or will we have to wait for another? Can you imagine the emotion going on in the heart of this prophet who was ready to be beheaded and he knew his purpose was to be the forerunner of the Messiah? <laughs> And the messenger went to Jesus and said, John, the Baptist, your dear friend, is in prison and he's going to be beheaded. And John wants to know, are you the Christ? Or does John, or do we have to seek for another? You know, 
Jesus never did take that messenger into the synagogue and open the book and say, now I want to go to verse 16, chapter 49 in the book of the prophet. He never did say, I'm going to prove it to you doctrinally or theologically that, you know, everything's in the right place and I am he. He didn't even use one of the promises of the great prophets that was portraying indelibly and infallibly the coming of our blessed Messiah. You know what he did? He said, you go back. And you tell John that the blind see, the deaf hear, and the lame walk. And when John hears that message, he'll know that I am, that I am, that I am, that I am. Look at your hands. Oh, God. That's why we sit here. We ask you, we take the mask off. We have no pretensions within ourselves, Lord. We're naked before you in the Holy Spirit. What we want you to do, oh God, is to show us what must we do that we might work the works of God. Let's go and discover for just a moment before we get into the purpose, let's discover the magnitude of this great miracle. Philip answered and said that there's a lad here. Or actually it wasn't Philip, it was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. All Philip answered was that 200 penny worth of bread, which was about $30 in our currency, is not sufficient where we can give every one of them even just a little bit to eat. But Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. He said, there's a little lad here. He's got five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Now we got a few pennies, $30 that can't do the job. And we got five loaves and two small fishes, and they can't do the job. And Jesus said, make the men sit down. Jesus took the loaves. He gave thanks. He distributed them to the disciples. They sat down. They ate as much as they wanted. They were all filled. They gathered up the fragments out of five loaves and two fishes after feeding a multitude of people. There were still 12 baskets left over. Now, this Jesus said to prove. Purpose, 14th verse. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle, all right, a great multitude followed Jesus. Why? Because he was a great preacher, because he was a great teacher, because he was an orator, because
because he had a slick silver tongue that could wrap the vocabularies of the world around the heads of the people until they swam in the verbosity of what he was talking about. They followed him because they saw the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. They saw the miracles. Now, those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, this is of a truth. The prophet of God that should come into the world. You say, hey, Brother Shula, what are you trying to tell us? I'm trying to tell you this. One genuine miracle and 5,000 men stood up on a hillside and said, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. This church was born with a very unique characteristic. It wasn't born through words. It wasn't born through theology. It wasn't born through just blessings. But it was born through what the Apostle Paul manifested and revealed to us when he spoke these words in 1 Corinthians 2, 4, and 5. If anybody had the ability to be able to articulate through a great vocabulary and be able to talk and speak to people, the Apostle Paul had that ability. He was an educated man, and we've got education today. Only God knows we're educated beyond our own best degrees. Now, don't get angry with Brother Srilla. I'm not trying to major in ignorance. But I am telling you, education, as great as it is, is not where it's at. We're not looking for a lot of educated people that are going to be able to take this world through the means of their education. We're looking. We're looking for educated people who know how to surrender themselves to the work and the moving of the Holy Spirit where God can anoint what they have. Listen to what Paul said, this Pharisee of Pharisees, this Hebrew of Hebrews, and remember, if there was to be another Jew to sit upon the throne during the days 2,000 years ago when Paul was alive, Paul was in line for this kingly appointment. That's how important this individual was. And listen to what he said. 1 Corinthians 2, 4. He said, my speech. And my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom. I didn't come to you with all my sermons in order and my first point, my second point, my third point. Nothing wrong with that. But Paul said, I didn't come to you that way. I didn't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom. But he said, I came in demonstration of the Spirit 
but not just with a lot of goosebumps and not just with a lot of blessing and not just with a shake and a dance and a jiggle. He said, I came to you in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Why? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. We're not looking for faith that stands on doctrinal issues. Because one day we got people believing they're going to be raptured before the tribulation. Then one day they change their mind because a preacher comes along and they're going to be raptured in the middle. Then another preacher comes along and they change their mind because now they're going to be raptured at the end and go through the whole tribulation. And then comes another whole group of preachers and says there's going to be no rapture at all. And so now the people are worse confused than they ever were. We are not looking for our faith to be built in that which can change. But listen to what Paul said. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but it was in demonstration of the spirit and of power why? That your faith should stand not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. If you want your faith to stand, you've got to manifest the power. Now, you say, Brother Srilla, if you're not interested in producing blessing, if you're not interested in just getting us to the place where we have a good time spiritually, what are you interested in God doing? I'm interested in God giving to you a new spiritual dimension, a special spiritual breakthrough that will take you past the point of blessing and that will take you into a relationship of P-O-W-E-R. Power! It's one thing to preach. And I tell people, it's easy to teach. Most people can be taught to teach. It's easy to teach, but it's another thing to be able to produce the proof, produce the evidence of what you're preaching. Now, Brother Srilo, how do we produce power? Listen to me. If you look all over this auditorium, you will see that there are a lot of lights. How do you produce light? And what is the purpose of light? First, how do you produce it? To every one of these beautiful lights that we see here in this auditorium, there are two wires that go to the receptacle where the light shines from. Now, you can see I'm not much of an artist. You don't need any discernment for that. <laughs> but there's a wire which we call a positive wire. And it comes into one side of this socket. Now, I'm also not much of an electrician. So if I get this wrong, one of you electricians just stand up and just help me right out. 
But one of those wires is called a positive wire. Now, if you just hook up this wire and you go to the light switch and you flip on the light, nothing will happen. Why? Because you don't have the proper ingredient that brings about the capability to produce the electrical current that can bring the power to that light that will enable it to shine, that will enable it to produce the purpose that it was created for, and that was to dispel darkness. And that's part of our weakness. Now I thank God for the power of positive thinking. I thank God for right mental attitudes. They are a part of our experience in Christ. I even thank God for the message of positive confession. It's all right. It's part. But by itself, it is not enough. Why? Because we are not talking about mind over matter. We are not talking about just taking a little scripture, like somebody says, and standing on it. Brother, let me tell you something. You can stand on scripture till you're blue in the face unless you have the spiritual environment and characteristic and breakthrough that goes with standing on the scripture you'll keep standing and standing and standing and nothing will ever happen You see, we're not looking for something that just gives us mind over matter. We're not just looking for something that turns around the natural circumstances of our environment. But we're looking for a spiritual breakthrough that does what God promised. The blind shall see, the deaf shall hear, the lame shall walk. We're talking about not just mental ascent and not just riding a positive hobby horse. But we're talking about a spiritual breakthrough of power, 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 power. What must we do? Oh God, what must we do that we might work the works of God? So there's another wire. And we've been talking about that wire most of the morning, whether you realize it or not. There's another wire. That wire which goes to the other side of that receptacle is not a wire that anybody likes to talk about. But you cannot produce electricity which has the purpose of producing the ingredient that provides the necessary capability for this light to produce its function which is to give off light so that it can, as an end result, dispel darkness. Now, what is that other wire, Brother Strilla? It is a negative wire. It is a negative wire. And you cannot produce power by just being positive, I'm positive, I'm positive, I quote the promises, I'm positive, I'm positive, I'm positive. You gotta have the negative wire 
where God gets into the heart and the life in our innermost being and he changes us and he does something for us personally brother he gives us an experience that takes us and turns us upside down and inside out so that we are meat for the master's use oh hallelujah Hallelujah! Put your hands up and talk to him. Come on! Remember that third full part of the prophecy that God gave to us for the school? One, our life will never be the same. Two, we'll know how to work the works of God. And three, God will take us into what? Say it. Say it. Say it again. Come on, really say it. Say it again. An experience. And what will that experience do? It will manifest the faith and the P-O-W-E-R The faith and the P-O-W-E-R The faith and the P-O-W-E-R Of God That experience Will manifest the faith And the power of God In our lives We're not talking We're not talking about a surface experience. And neither are we talking about a happenstance experience. And neither, when I say ye shall know the truth, neither is Brother Shulo talking about just the casual, and you have to forgive me when I say this, the fingertip casual experience of knowing Jesus Christ where you are just born again. Most Christians and most people get to the born again experience and they get the blessing of salvation and that's where they stop. In Philippians, we are given a clear picture of what Brother Srila is talking about. The Apostle Paul is coming to the very end of his spiritual journey. He's not at the beginning, but he's nigh on to the end of his course, his spiritual journey. And we find Paul in Philippians, the third chapter, crying out to God from the very innermost recesses of his entire being. He's crying out to God. And he's exclaiming a desire. A hidden secret of his heart. He's expressing it to God. He's saying that I may know him. Now, didn't the apostle Paul know him? Come on. Didn't the apostle Paul know Jesus? What was he crying out for? Not just to come to the point of blessing that he had experienced. Not just to go to the surface of a 
relationship. But having given his life and having spent his life, he's crying out to God in Philippians, the third chapter, that I may know him. Paul, what are you after? Paul says, I'll not be satisfied until my life is so interwoven in its relationship with my Lord and my Savior until I go into the depth, until the dimension of all that God has for me is made manifest in my life. He said, I will not be satisfied. He said, I still hunger. I still thirst. I still yearn for the working of God in my life. And what did he cry out for? Philippians 3.10. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. I want to go all the way. I don't care what it is. I want a dimension. I want God to take me to the furthest degree that I possibly can, even if necessary, to be made conformable unto the same death that Jesus died. I am willing, but I want to know him. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, come on, put your hands up in His presence. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. Go ahead, tell him right now. You want to pass the point of blessing. Go on, tell him right now. God, I want to pass that point of blessing. I don't want to just be on the surface. Go ahead, put those hands up in his presence. The Bible says, lift up holy hands of faith without wrath and without doubting. It didn't say if you're Methodist or Baptist or Presbyterian or hard-boiled over bait backslidden Pentecostal. He said, everybody, raise your hands and pray with faith, nothing wavering. Go ahead, get a breakthrough. Come on. Break out of that environment, out of that shell, out of that reservation, out of that conservativeness. Go on, break it through God, that I may know you, that I may know you, that I may know you. Mark, there is nothing like Amara Cirillo School of Ministry to watch the tears in the prophet of God's eyes as he is imparting to us a school with a difference. Yes, and we all want to go beyond the point of blessing and into the point of power. But what leads us to power, it's sacrifices. Mm. What lead Paul to power, it's sacrifice. And I would like to share with you a word I heard from God. I never heard a word like this. Greg, God mm -hmm. told me, he said, Mark, I want you to stand in the same place where Jesus stood in the presence of his father while it was on earth. And I say, God, how can I stand in the same place where Jesus stood in, in your presence while it was on earth? And God told me, I'm going to show you the way. I said, God, but what is the way? And he said, I am the way. I am the truth. 
and I am the life. This is a place where Jesus was able to say to the Father, not my will, but thy will be done. This is a place where he was able to say there is no greater love but to give your life for those who love. And this is a place where all of us that want to manifest power, this is a place of death. But it's only when we reach that place of death, as Paul said, that the resurrected power of God will flow from us and that God will take all the glory. Amen. And you know, when Jesus faced death, the Bible said that it was because of the joy that was set before him. So I just want you to know something. This proof producer message is taking you and I somewhere that we have never been before. And God said we must believe that he is a rewarder. God is waiting to reward you when you will take that step like Mark is talking about, like you're doing right now. You could be doing many other things, but you have stayed connected to this message. You have carved out this time to say, God, I am diligently seeking something greater from you. And I declare that God is a rewarder of you today who are diligently seeking him. And I wanna congratulate those of you that are taking the quizzes you're seeing right now on the screen, Mark, and we're gonna talk just a minute about this incredible message that Brother Thrilla brought to us today. But I have to just take a little break because I want people to see the reward. I want people to see what happens. See, these people you're seeing right now on the screen, these are people like you. Maybe you're seeing yourself right now. And we're gonna show every day those that are taking these incredible school of ministry courses and you're making the investment in your future you see you're not feeding your fear but you're feeding your future and i want to congratulate you for staying connected we are going somewhere tomorrow and the next day and then the incredible seventh day will be our final day proof producers it will be next week if you haven't completed your miracle power living quiz i want to encourage you please we're past the deadline but i talked to my incredible assistant phyllis i call her the dean she's the dean of the school of ministry and i said phyllis can we give those that didn't get it completed yet can we just give them another day or two and she said yes we'll do that we've had the most people of any course complete the quiz for miracle power living but i believe that proof producers will be our greatest and mark what brother Srilo brought us in today going past the point of blessing what a joy it gives you such a joy when you can see a genuine miracle mm-hmm. happening through your own hands yeah. and you are ready to experience that in your life and you will see the joy on the faces of these children these people receiving the healing touch of god and what is amazing is that with one miracle unbelief is removed amen and it will be an open door for you to witness the good news of jesus christ and see multitudes come to the salvation of Jesus. You know, I want to pray with you before we go off today. What an incredible truth that Brother Srilo brought us, that Mark has echoed. And it's for somebody today. You see, going past the point of blessing means you're willing to go out of your comfort zone. You see, the point of blessing is where there is comfort, where there is no fear, where there is no lack. God told me to tell somebody today that this is your time like the four lepers who looked at each other and they said, are we just going to sit here and die? And they said, we're going to get up and we're going to do something. The odds were against them. Here's what I want to say to you today. I want to say to you that thinking little of yourself is not a virtue. It's a trap. The message of this proof producer school of ministry 
is that God wants to use your life just where you are today. Don't compare yourself to Mark Masson. Don't compare yourself to Maura Cirillo. Don't compare yourself to anybody today. There were three servants. One got five talents. One got two talents. One got one talent. You know what the one talented person did? They did nothing because they compared themselves. And they said, well, if I had all the opportunities that the five talent had, or if I had the gifting that the two talent had, the Bible says that the one talented servant hid their talent. I declare to you today, it's time for you to come out of hiding. It's time for you to come out of hiding from your promotion. I declare that the word of the Lord for you today is that greater is he that is in you and greater is he that is for you than he that is against you. And you're beginning to feed your future and not your fear. So Father, we thank you for your servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. Lord, we thank you for this incredible message. What must we do that we might work the works of God? Father, I pray that there is not one today that is thinking little of themselves, but God, that every man, every woman, every young person, every pastor that is discouraged today, every person that says, I've tried again and again, and I've hit a brick wall, God, let them know today you're taking them past their point of resistance. And Lord, you're causing them to break through into a new season of power, into a new season of blessing, into a new season of promotion. God, we're going to do what Mark said today, and we're going to create an altar. And Lord, we're going to say, Lord, here is something that I have been holding back from you. I tell you today, God is just looking for you to give him just a little bit more time. God is looking for you to give him just a little bit more of your heart, of your life, of your finances, of your future. God says, if you'll just take a step today toward me, he said, I'll take a hundred steps towards you. And so, Father, we thank you for that anointing today. We thank you for our brother, for our sister. Lord, we thank you for legacy and this incredible anointing that has been left by your prophet. God, I thank you that there is no anointing, God, that is left that does not increase. And so, God, I thank you for a double portion for my brother, for my sister that's willing to do what Mark was saying and making that connection today, staying connected, not shaking off of this message, off of this school of ministry, off of this opportunity. So, Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being a part of your end time plan God, we declare today, there's not one person watching that you have planned any defeats. We can't wait to see you tomorrow. Mark, it's gonna be incredible. I can't believe it's day four of Proof Producers. This is rich. This is incredible. This is priceless. I tell you, there's nothing greater that I believe that we could be receiving at this time in our life, this time in our future and so stay connected we love you we'll see you tomorrow live from legacy